Hey, this is Joey from Firehose Games, and I'm here with a preview of the 0.1.2 patch that's coming this week. We can officially announce that the second of the two quality of life updates for Tectonica is arriving this week. We're shooting for Tuesday, but it might happen on Wednesday. Uh, we just returned from our summit, and we kind of have to get back to work and, and get resettled. Um, so hopefully we'll have it for you tomorrow if you're watching this on Monday, but there's a chance it might be here on Tuesday. And heck, you could be watching this while it's already out, so welcome aboard. Um, I have a few, maybe one or two very brief announcements before we get into the patch preview. Uh, first of all, the, the patch notes will be going live with the patch itself. So they'll be up on Steam, you can find them on our Discord, you'll also be able to find them on our, our website, tectonicagame.com. Um, so they'll be more in depth than what I'm going to dive into today, which I am going to cover a lot, but there's a, a bunch of both small and maybe less banner updates that are probably affecting a handful of players or a bunch of players, but not every player. Um, so the stuff that I'm talking about today should be affecting just about everybody. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is a bundle that we're offering. We announced it two weeks ago now, but we are bundled or partnered with the team that's making desynced. We actually met them at the Tokyo Game Show. We both decided like we kind of love each other's games. Desynced is awesome if you haven't played it yet or heard of it. It's a factory automation game that sort of ditches the conveyor belt and, and inserter logistics system for uh, programmable bots. So you can actually create behaviors for these bots to run stuff between your factory. Um, it, it just introduces a lot of really interesting logistics problems that we don't even have in Tectonica right now. So. I don't know, we, we, we kind of love the game and they like our game and they were super nice and we decided, hey, let's partner up. So the bundle is up now, it's limited time. We haven't really picked an end date. We're just gonna see how it goes. Um, it's a complete the set bundle. So if you already own our game or maybe you already own their game or you own neither game, uh, you'll get them for 12% off. So if you already own Tectonica, for example, and you want desynced, if you buy it through our bundle, you'll get desynced for 12% off. Uh, that goes in addition to any sales that might be going on at the time they're on sale. So pretty cool. I want to dig into the patch preview. As usual, I have a, a list of, of stuff to talk about. It's a pretty long list this week, so excuse me as I zip over to it and scroll around. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to get through everything, and I think there's a lot of cool stuff here. So let's dive in, and we're going to start with the monorail and HVC bug. So when early access launched, 0.1 launched, and even 0.1.1, we had this really nasty and obnoxious bug that happened late game. Players would get to the monorail, they would build their large networks and try to get the monorail powered up using the HVC cable, which are both of those items are late game tech, um, and they wouldn't work. The monorail depot would not receive power from the HVC cable when connected to the power floors. That was the bug, and it's obnoxious. It made it so that you had to run power floors all over your factory or create a secondary like power station next to the monorail in order to get it to run. To be honest, the HVC cable was like the last thing that made it into Tectonica before early access. It came in super hot right at the end. It was something we wanted to have and it works for a lot of systems. It's required in order to beat the game, um, but it's it's just pretty, you know, glitchy, I guess. And, and there were some bugs that we hadn't uncovered in our testing process and this was one of them. It's dead now, we fixed the bug. Uh, monorail depots will run with the HVC cable connected to their base and nothing else, right? So you can just set up the power floors, monorail, HVC cable down on the floor, good to go. This is huge for us. Um, it wasn't something that we were sure was gonna be able to get into 0.1.2, we were gonna try, um, but you know, it was a difficult, difficult bug because it, Really, it involved three separate systems. There was the machine power system, there's the power floor conductivity system, and then there's the HVC like power transfer system. So these were complex and the bug had a lot of layers. We fixed it. Uh, Sherith, our lead engineer, fixed it. And we're super psyched that this one is dead. Thank goodness. And speaking of dead bugs that we may miss more than others, uh, the 000 bug is gone. If you've been on our Discord forums and our Discord or even the Steam forums um, and on Reddit as well, our subreddit talks about this a lot. 000 is the center of the map as it is in 0 0.1, right? Uh, this location is where we preloaded a lot of stuff in, into the map in order to help with performance. Um, but unfortunately, there was a bug that created 
hologram versions of the stuff that we were preloading in and it also represented itself on the map so players would make their way to the pink caverns where the hydroelectric station is um, and they'd see this giant box like a core composer sized box under the ground dig and find nothing but holograms uh, and even worse, if you erase those holograms, they actually delete items back in your factory, which is super awful. Uh, this bug spawned the creation of, of a badge on our Discord, which I'll throw on the screen here because it's hilarious. We won't be getting rid of the badge. It's still funny, uh, but we are getting rid of the bug. Zero, zero, zero is gone. Thank goodness. Rest in peace. Uh, huge news. So into the world itself, uh, we've added more ore voxels to existing ore veins. A lot more ore voxels. Um, why did we do this? Let's get into the increased size first, and then I'll talk about the why. I made a fancy chart, check it out. So you see that everything went up. Uh, copper goes up by 894%, roughly. Iron goes up by 1266, limestone by 563, and Atlanta by 1397. All those are percentage increases. It's a lot more ore, uh, and we've done it by adding to the existing ore veins that are spread across the map. So what happens if you've dug into the area around those existing ore veins? That's a great question, and we are accounting for it. Um, essentially, we'll look at the snave, the snave. We'll look at the save and we'll try to figure out uh, where you've already dug. And if you've dug in a place where we're supposed to be adding these voxels, we simply won't add them there. Um, if you are, you know, want those voxels, you'll, you're going to need to start a new save. But it shouldn't affect it too much. We just didn't want to overrun factories or break saves in order to bring more ore into the map. And this was the best way that we could do it. Uh, we're pretty happy with the result and we think it's going to be good in the long run uh, for 0.2 the base building update you're going to need more ore in order to build all the base building parts that's why we've done this we've also wanted to prep the world for later updates as well so this is really a, a good for now quality of life update but it's also some future proofing in order to get you exactly what you need to build all this stuff in the game we want finite ore because we want you moving we want you to create new outposts we want you to to push further into the story and the story is going to have you moving from place to place too so you're being encouraged to not set up a factory in a single location uh, and 0.1 it's really easy to stay put later we don't want it to be too easy and we want the ore to be part of that push you to move requirement um, everyone knows by now if you've played our game long enough you know that that even though the ore is finite it takes a long time to chew through it uh, the previous math was 5,000 miners will take 5,000 hours to get through all the ore on 0 0.1. Uh, using the math or the, the percentage increases I gave you now, you could probably figure out how much more time that will require, but it's going to be a lot longer in order to get through all that ore, but it's still finite. We still want you moving. Um, speaking of moving, which is, man, these segues today are amazing. We have added the Mark III conveyor belts. These things are fast. Uh, the, the Mark I conveyors move 240 items per minute. Mark II is 480 items per minute. Mark III is 720 items per minute. They are zooming and they should help with a lot of the logistics problems that we have. Of course, if you know factory games, you know that when we add something like this, it just creates its own set of logistics problems. That's kind of the joy of upgrading stuff in factory games. We do not have more logistics stuff ready for the game quite yet, but it is planned. It is coming super soon. You won't see new inserter types or anything in the base building update that is solely focused on base building, but you will see more soon. So stay with us. Yes, we've heard your request for all the different filter types, all the different stack inserter types, all the different splitters and everything else. Yes, we've heard you. We also have our own plans for some interesting stuff. So stay tuned. Uh, that will be coming down the line and it will help with the Mark III conveyors that we've added. But enjoy the new speed. Uh, maybe you can turn belt riding on, which or off, right? There's a little spoiler for what's coming. We also introduced save slots with this one. So save slots is, is a much better way of organizing saves in Tectonica. Right now in, in version 0 0.1 and 0.1.1, um, saves are just a giant list that run in like chronological order of last play, right? Or last save, I guess. Uh, it's super unorganized. The system, 
like if you start a new game we have no way of knowing like which game you've started in and it's just like this this game of having to remember where things are um so the save slots are basically instance or world based every time you create a new game we actually have a folder that started and that that on the back end there's a folder but on the front side we've started a save slot and then in those save slots we have all the saves that are specific to that world or instance uh, and that includes your auto saves and your manual saves. The good news is that this is working backwards too. So we're going to be able to work with your existing saves and throw them into to, to slots. So you won't just see this pile of saves that's disorganized. You'll actually have slots ready for you. Um, of course, this, this brings in the question that I have kind of a bad news answer for. Save naming won't be here with 0.1.2. It's on our list. It, it comes down to controller support. We have to fully support controllers and we have to do it in a way that uh, feels good for UI and UX. And quite frankly, our UI and UX is not where we want it to be for Tectonica yet. So we're in process of overhauling and we're gonna make the keyboard edition, like being able to name saves as part of that process. Stay with us. We want name saves too. They are coming and is on the roadmap. We will be getting them. Uh, just not quite yet. In terms of accessibility, we've added a new feature for gathering plants. So early game, you know that you have to walk around and spam gather. So on the, the keyboard and mouse layout, you're just smashing E while you're walking through fields of Kindlevine or Shiverthorn. Um, it's kind of annoying. And it, quite frankly, for some people, it's an accessibility bother. Like it, it's, you know, not everybody can sit here and spam a key. We get it. Uh, we wanted to kind of come up with a solution that made it easier to mass gather plants like that uh, while not defeating the purpose of farming. Um, we want you to get to farming, right? We don't want we don't want gathering plants to be too easy because it'll just push off your requirement for making fuel via the planters and threshers. We want you to get to that sooner. The solution that we came up with was just a, a simple like you hold the gather button, look at a plant and it'll start gathering. And if you continue to look at plants within like a specific time period, you'll just do it automatically. So by holding E on keyboard and mouse, if you just kind of make your way through an area of Kindlevine or Shiverthorn or whatever plants you can gather, um, as long as they're gatherable, you'll keep just reaching out and grabbing them. It's super easy. Um, it's not it's not gonna make it so that you can hoover up everything all at once, but it is kind of a nice go between, you know, between making it too easy to gather plants and making it too obnoxious. So we think this is a good, happy medium and we're, we're, we're you know, pleased with where it landed. We've also introduced a new system that should help with large factory performance, and that's machine streaming. This one's pretty complicated. We did a longer video and blog post about this a few weeks back um, as we were previewing 0.1.2. Um, but the, the gist is that essentially with Unity, um, every like inserter, let's take an inserter for example, has like, I don't know, 14 objects associated with it. Not a big deal when you're talking about one inserter, but when you're talking about a, a full cavern of inserters or maybe in front of Victor, like you can have, you know, a thousand inserters or something if you were to be crazy, but all of those inserters would be there with every one of their 14 game objects. So just do the math, right? A thousand times 14. And then all of a sudden we're accounting for a lot of machine memory all at once in a very small space. Um, if we don't, you know, stream those machines in, then we create the issue of having that machine memory out across the world all the time. This affects performance, right? So we've done a few things. First of all, we only stream in the information that you need as you're there and everything else is simulated in the back end. That's awesome. Now we've also reduced it so that we only need the, the 14 game objects for one inserter spread across all, not 14 times a thousand. So even if you have a thousand inserters now, we're only gonna be streaming in the data for 14 game objects, not 14 times a thousand. Huge. This creates a really nice memory offload for us and it makes it so that the, the larger factories will perform a little bit better. Um, if you've had a really big factory and you walk around, you kind of like have a relatively smooth frame rate with like these hiccups, these dips that kind of stutter. 
those dips are being reduced. This is also good for Xbox users. So the Xbox is, it limits us with its lower memory, right? Like a PC might have, you know, 16 or 32 gigs, but an Xbox does not. So when you're walking around a large factory, the memory issues are actually more problematic for you. And this solves a lot of those issues and potentially will solve some of the crashing issues that we've seen with super late game factories on the Xbox platform. So let us know, um, it should be helping in the testing that we've done, it's been helping. So. We'll see, good news. Uh, finally, this one's pretty cool and one that we really haven't previewed up until now, but the color and fog systems for our game were also overhauled between now and 0.1.2. What am I talking about? Um, we've made it so that there's this nice ambient fog in the caves that sort of goes with the color of the environment themselves. So the mushroom grotto near the freight elevator, those mushrooms are giant and green. That space now has this really nice green fog. Uh, the pink caverns near the hydroelectric plant, those were always you know, surrounded by those pink hydras. That also has a nice pink fog to kind of go with it. It makes our game a lot more uh, alive and vivid and it feels really moody when you get into these spaces, which is what we want. We want Calyx to feel um, alien and moody and colorful and the fog really helps. But we've also overhauled our color filtering process. Um, if you look kind of in, in 0.1 and 0.11, the colors are, are a little muted almost. Um, they're a little, I don't know, softer or, or, or grayed over. Um, now we've made it so that they're way more vivid. The colors look so much better in, in 0.1.2. The game is more vivid, it's more colorful, and it looks awesome. You may also notice that the flashlight is a little bit brighter too. Uh, Mark actually got into the flashlight a little bit and, and, and kind of created this warm glow around the player and increased the fidelity for the, the point the point portion of the headlamp. Um, it's not overwhelmingly bright. We still want you to be kind of competing with the dark here, but it does feel warmer and it feels nicer when you're in a confined space. So all of that comes together to make Tectonica look just a little bit different in 0.1.2 and it's pretty stark and shocking and we kind of love it. We have a bunch of other smaller settings that are updated in 0.1.2. Uh, I'll just quickly run through them right now before we move into the end of the video, but uh, mouth smoothing or mouse acceleration, we have a toggle for that now. You can turn it on and off. Uh, smart snapping, this is in preparation for the base building update but you might like using it now. Smart snapping kind of auto snaps items to uh, the grid, the, the, the grid logic that we have in place. Uh, a good example is the miners, right? Like if you go next to an ore vein, a miner will automatically rotate to point towards the ore vein. Um, with smart snapping off, that miner won't do that. The reason we're doing this is because we're prepping for base building in 0 0.1, or excuse me, 0 0.2. Uh, so with base building, you'll want to have more freedom and so you can turn smart snapping off. We've also added a bunch of video settings, a frame rate limiter, um, the ability to play borderless windowed full screen. There's lots of stuff. Uh, the belt riding toggle is here, so you can actually turn off belt riding. We call it the no fun toggle, uh, but we get it. Like it's pretty obnoxious to be trying to, to set assembler recipes or something and have a Mark II conveyor belt move you while you're trying to access machine menus. Uh, you can turn that off now. So that's really it uh, for 0.1.2. The patch notes will have more, uh, but this is all that we want to share in the preview. Dig into the patch notes when they come out with the patch, which should be tomorrow or might be Wednesday. And thanks for hanging out. You guys are a huge reason why we're able to put together these big patches like this. Um, your feedback means a ton to us, and we try to make sure that we're there and listening and chatting with you on Discord and on Steam and on Reddit. Um, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for all of your comments and, and, and even your kind words, too. It means a lot to our team. Uh, we love that you're here. So come hang out with us on the Discord. It's discord.gg slash tectonica. Say hi. I'm Joey. Lauren has left most puddles. She's there as well. And we'll see you soon. Enjoy the new patch.